I'll go through all of today's Tesla stock news and although Tesla stock is down today a little bit, it is actually outperforming NASDAQ 100 and especially NASDAQ 100 technology sector. We got a pretty strong week in China, 12,800 registrations. This is this last week and look at the previous quarter at the same time in blue. It was close to 5,000 deliveries based on insurance data, but now we are well over 10,000. We are still slightly behind the last quarter in China, but only by a little bit. And if this trend continues, we will be ahead of the previous quarter very soon. If the rumors turn out to be true that Tesla indeed is working on refreshing the Model 3 in China, then these numbers look even more impressive. Also, remember how earlier I said that a lower Model 3 production number in Giga Shanghai would also further confirm that indeed Tesla is working on refreshing the Model 3? Well, we don't have a production number yet, but we have a wholesale uh, split of the Model 3 and the Y number, which is pretty close to what we are looking for. And indeed, the Model 3 numbers haven't been this low this whole year. So this is some strong indication that indeed Tesla is now actively working on refreshing the Model 3 probably as soon as possible. And according to some rumors, Tesla is already making some refresh Model 3s. Bank of America has a new note about Tesla stock and you will want to see this one. Uh, we reiterate our neutral rating. We view the company as a trailblazer in the EV market and believe it could be successful as EV demand increases over time. Could be successful. I guess having the world's best-selling vehicle does not count as a success. Tesla Model Y will be the world's best-selling vehicle this year. Tesla's self-funding status and ongoing access to relatively low-cost capital should also help support future growth. That said, there are a number of hurdles, including uncertainty in the broader macro environment, risks to EV demand, growing competition and management distractions that could persist over the near term. The keyword here is the near term. Especially the concern about the EV demand is certainly only a concern in the near term and not in the long term. In the long term, everyone will eventually basically have an EV. Worrying a lot about current EV demand is a lot like worrying about smartphone adoption back in 2000, let's say 9 or 10, because, you know, we just had a massive crisis. So yeah, that obviously did not stop the smartphone adoption. And even if we have a huge recession in the next few years, let's say, the EV adoption will still continue. I personally love this. Tesla's first third-party app is here and it's all about fleets. Tesla appears to have quietly rolled out its support for official third-party applications. The first third-party app is Standard Fleet, a fleet management platform that's currently being used by a number of Tesla ride-sharing and EV-sharing companies across the globe. Eventually, Tesla vehicles will support many third-party apps. Before I got a Tesla, I have to say this was one of my biggest concerns. Uh, charging the vehicle when it's raining and being afraid of being electrocuted, but <laughs> you can see this test right here. Uh, nothing happens. Now, there is a question though, and it's a fair question. What happened to the first few guys that tried this test? Hopefully nothing happened. By the way, definitely don't pour water on purpose into any electric outlet, including Tesla's, just to be safe. In North America, Tesla averages 38 new supercharger posts installed per day this year so far, pretty much. We also have more V4 superchargers being installed. According to JD Power, in the US, 8.5% of all sales in July were EVs. Last year just says it was about 5%, so from 5 to 8.5%, that's more than a 60% increase in just one single year. That's Pretty fast growth. Tesla just won a lawsuit in China. Tesla China sued China's Tesla used car and received a compensation ruling. Yeah, I think the main problem is that they used the logo here. This could be something completely else, but you put this logo, which is identical to basically Tesla's actual logo. Yeah, you are clearly infringing here. But even if they didn't use the logo, I think the name is still too similar to Tesla's actual name because this is about cars. This could be a somewhat important tweet from Elon Musk. 
I think we may have figured out some aspects of AGI. The car has a mind. Not an enormous mind, but a mind nonetheless. Emma Peppers here has a pretty good point about Tesla's chief financial officer leaving. There are over 10 high profile Tesla executives at this point. We'd all think is major news if, when they leave. They will all retire, resign, move on at some point. This departure by Zach is sort of an expected surprise. I'm not worried about it and have faith Tesla has a very deep bench. I fully agree with Emmett here. It is really inevitable that we will have more departures, high profile departures too. But Tesla has a very deep bench. I think we will be just fine. We should pay attention to this. Green got a hand on a hardware 4 computer and he says looks like the Model Y hardware 4 infotainment side is somewhat crippled compared to hardware 3 units. Now I would like to point out that he specifically said infotainment. He did not mention full cell driving for example. So that's something that we should pay more attention to but doesn't sound like great news here but Tesla probably had good reasons to do this. I'd like to learn more about this a little bit later. He continues and says it has half as much RAM and half as much storage 8 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes respectively given current requirements for Steam that crosses Steam out even though Steam was never supported officially um, for Model 3 and Y anyway. This hardware 4 comes from uh, Texas and Fremont and he again reiterates that he's talking specifically about infotainment. It is also important to remember that Tesla earlier this year during the investor day said that they don't really make things cheaper and worse at the same time. If they have to cut costs, they still keep the same functionality, but cut the costs. I wonder if Tesla is doing something perhaps on the software side or something that perhaps we are missing that would still make the system function just as fine, but obviously uh, the cost would be reduced. I'm not sure about this one. It's something that I will certainly want to look deeper into a little bit later. It also is important to remember that having lower specs will not guarantee that the product is actually worse. For example, you look at the Samsung Galaxy Note versus iPhone and you will see that the iPhone has less RAM than the Samsung Note phone. And yet, most people would say that the iPhone is better. You will want to brace yourself for this one. Uh, China's overseas shipments dropped by 14.5% in USD terms last month from a year earlier, the worst decline since February 2020. So it may not be looking good for China. Here's how the numbers compared to expectations. So exports declined by 14.5% instead of 13.2% expected, but imports declined by 12.4% versus 56 expected. Sanctions are also certainly not helping China here either. This of course could impact Tesla in China, but so far when we look at Tesla's deliveries in July, we don't really see a huge problem there. I think it's mostly because of Tesla working on refreshing the Model 3, but maybe there's some impact too. However, the delivery data that I went over earlier today, just for the last week, looks pretty good in China, so maybe there's not that much impact to Tesla, at least not right now. This was spreading on Twitter, uh, this rumor that these are refresh model 3s. However, it was quickly debunked that that is definitely not a model 3. As you can see, uh, the badge is definitely not a Tesla's badge. It has pretty interesting doors though. Inside EVs is now also reporting that Tesla Model 3 Highland reportedly enters trial production in China. The whole article though is written based on this news story from this publication in China. So we don't really know for sure, but it says it is expected to start mass production in September and start deliveries in October. ChargePoint is announcing a series of new initiatives to improve the reliability of 245,000 strong network of chargers, we expect these multi-million dollar investments to deliver network reliability of nearly 100% once fully implemented. I wonder why haven't they done that yet? In the meantime, Hyundai, Kia and Genesis are facing a class action lawsuit over malfunctioning charge ports. Speaking of issues, Lucid <laughs> issues three recall notices impacting over 6,200 air sedans. Doesn't really seem anything serious. Two of these recalls will be fixed over the air and the other one 
seems to be pretty cheap to fix. There's this new article on Yahoo News that says Tesla is looking to build a massive mining facility and factory in a surprising new location. We have heard about this a lot before, but nothing as of late as to why the company is attracted to the province. In a document Tesla filed with the Ontario government, it states, the competitiveness of Ontario and its ability to attract capital through approvals timeframes that are competitive with other locations while working with the government to identify incentives to further increase the attractiveness of Ontario. Rivian just posted its Q2 earnings and they raised their 2023 production guidance by 2,000 to 52,000 vehicles and they actually beat earnings per share expectations. They posted minus $1.08 versus $1.41 estimated. The revenue was also higher than estimated. Their gross profits also improved, a $35,000 gross profit per vehicle uh, improvement. Gross profit is minus $412 million though. Operating expenses are still high and a net loss is still over a billion dollars. However, right now as I'm recording this, Rivian stock is down about 3% in the after hours. So even though on the surface they did beat expectations, the stock is not taking it well somehow, just like Tesla. I haven't really looked through the earnings report, so maybe there's something hidden in there. But on the surface, looks like they beat the expectations, but investors are selling the stock. So I would assume there's something perhaps going on, but I'm not sure. And YouTube says you should watch this video next, but if you haven't finished watching this Elon Musk interview, watch this one first. My name is Matt Postius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.